Seems like companies all around the world today are utilizing big data to help optimize their business. And as bloggers, we should be doing the same thing, right? So as bloggers, we often rely on tools that give us that data and help us to analyze it. Now in the past, we've talked about why we don't usually use keyword research tools. Um, and so you might be surprised to hear me talking about this today. I've decided that it was time to do a little bit more thorough of a study. So I selected five of our websites and I picked eight articles across those sites. Now these were not cherry picked to try to get a specific outcome, but these are articles that were selected because they currently rank number one or two. The reason I picked articles that are ranking high is because the high ranking articles are gonna give us a good indication of the meaningful search volume. The first example here is from fishtanksetups.com. The article in question here is about datanoid care. The Google search that I made was datanoid care. Datanoid is a type of fish, and the article is an article all about caring for this type of fish. There's a lot of information in there around the entire topic. And so the question is, how many people are actually searching for datanoid care? Now I've run this through a lot of the different tools. Ahrefs says eh, about 40 searches for datanoid care and maybe a combined other 40 for relatively the same search. SEM Rush says datanoid care, 20 searches per month. That's it. Uh, maybe 10 for this other search and 10 for this other search. Moz, they told me uh, zero to 10 searches. I can't do another one because I already used my 10 free queries. Keywords Anywhere, they're telling me 50 searches per month. Um, a couple of these other long tail related keywords, 10 each. Even Google's Keyword Planner for their ads is telling me this is maybe 10 to 100 searches per month. This article in the month of November got 868 page views from Google. How are all of the tools so off? None of the tools except Google actually have a complete data set. They're all operating on a very small subset of the data. Now, they have tons and tons and tons of data, but it pales in comparison to the 3.5 billion Google searches made every single day. That's insane, the amount of search that's being done on Google today. So their data is incomplete. They're also not nearly as good at Google at finding semantic searches or semantically equivalent searches. By that, what we mean is different words that mean the same thing. They're not as good at identifying that. Google is, and so people can search a lot of different phrases that mean the same thing. Um, how to care for a datanoid fish. That's a different search, but it means the same thing. The other thing that they're not as good at accounting for is adjacent searches. On the fish example, this article is able to rank for things like what other fish can be in a fish tank with a datanoid? How long do datanoid fish live? There are a lot of these searches where this article can rank maybe not number one or two, but it's ranking pretty well and getting some traffic from Google. But how is it that Google's Keyword Planner, their own tool is off by so much? The answer is it isn't. Google Keyword Planner is a tool that's made for advertisers. Let's say I wanted to put an ad up that appears when people search for the words datanoid care. Well, Google is gonna be a little more precise there and probably not show it for as many semantic searches, so it cuts some of that out. But also, Google's gonna give preference to showing my ad when the entire search phrase shows more commercial intent that is a more valuable search that's more likely to lead to a click on my article. And since an ad using the keywords datanoid care isn't going to show up on all of the searches that contain those keywords, it's really just um, an approximation of how many impressions I'm likely to get if I choose those keywords for my ad. Okay now, but that's just one example. I did this seven more times. I selected the articles first, then ran them through the tools, and let's see what they showed. So here's the data. You can see um, the article here, and then the numbers from each of the keyword research tools that they say the search volume should be for the article. I'll give you just a minute to look at those. Now look at the actual numbers. The tools aren't even close most of the time. And in some of these cases, the traffic number is for an article that ranks number two or three. For example, the article um, about how to become a patent attorney. That article ranks number three 
and still the tools are dramatically lower than the actual traffic from Google to that article. When you see them say that the search volume for a keyword is zero to 50, maybe 100, you think, am I willing to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and write that article if it's only gonna get viewed by 50 people per month and only if they all click on my article? No, you're not gonna do that. I wouldn't do that, it's a waste of my time. If you knew that that article could potentially get a thousand page views per month, you absolutely would. And so these tools are convincing people to not write content that they probably should. But here's the other problem that we see with that. Yes, if you only focused on the ones that the tools say actually do have high search volume, the odds are that the search volume is going to be higher. But those are also the same articles that every other blogger that's using those tools is going to write because their tool says that it also has higher search volume. And so what we find is that a lot of bloggers are waking up at five o'clock in the morning and only writing the content that's going to have way higher competition. And yet through our methods of search analysis every single day, we are finding topics to write that no one else is covering because the tools tell them not to. So what about just using these tools to get good keyword ideas? A lot of times you're working through the process of your search analysis, trying to come up with ideas of what to write about, and you just need something to help you brainstorm. Well, all of these tools that we just talked about will give you other recommendations. Um, they'll help you explore keywords, and that's, that's fantastic. Um, there are also numerous other free tools that will do the same thing. Um, that basically you put in some keyword and they're just gonna spit out a whole bunch of related searches. I mean, we just saw that on Keywords Anywhere here on the side, people also search for. And I can copy this, I can, I can go down the path, maybe pick Datanoid Price and okay, what are some other related searches for that? Um, and just see lots and lots and lots of ideas. So if you do wanna use those kind of tools, and it totally makes sense, I mean, sometimes you just are blocked and you don't know what is the next avenue I should go down with my blog. What are the next topics I should choose to write about? And you just need something to help you break through that. These tools are perfect for that. The tools are helpful, but they're not as good as your brain. If in your brain you look at that and think, I don't think anybody's actually searching for that, they're probably not. And if in your brain you think, they say the search volume is zero, but is there really nobody searching for how to take care of a datanoid fish? That doesn't make sense to me. Of course people are searching for it. Use your brain. When you do your competition analysis, go use your brain, go look at the actual search phrase, um, see what else comes up in the SERP and determine whether or not you have an opportunity to win number one, two or three for that article. So I started out this video kind of talking up these tools and why we should use them. The truth is that the tools that I showed you have cool features. I wanna highlight just a few, and this is by no means an exhaustive list of what these tools have to offer, but I wanna show you a few of the tools that we do often use and why we like them anyway. The two specifically that I wanna show you are Ahrefs and SEMrush. Um, I like on both of these, they both have a, some form of a site audit or a site explorer. I can go to Ahrefs Site Explorer and I can search a site and it's gonna give me a lot of information. It's gonna tell me, um, it's gonna do a ton of link tracking, which is awesome. Um, this is really one of the biggest features that I like. Um, Google Search Console will give, do some link tracking, and by that what I mean is keeping track of who's linking to you, where you're getting backlinks from, what articles they're linking to, um, it's tracking your internal links, it can help identify any broken links on your website to within your site or to outgoing sites, a lot of neat things here. Um, and you can dive into these details and just see who's linking to you, what articles, and how that's changing over time. Now, another thing to note is that the, other, the numbers that they provide to you here, um, including all of the links, they're also not perfectly accurate. They don't have complete data, but it's nice. I mean, the organic traffic number, that's totally wrong. I've never found it to be accurate on any of these tools, especially for smaller websites. It's great for huge websites like CNN because there's so much data to be had. But again, on small websites, um, their, their sample size is too small to be able to accurately extrapolate 
um, and give you a, a good number here for organic traffic, um, organic keywords, traffic value, and all that stuff. Um, I don't really like to look at those. I just mostly like this link tracking, and I also like them helping me identify issues on my website. Of course, there are other tools on Ahrefs as well, and in fact, if you're using Ahrefs, um, I'd love it if you'd comment below and tell me what is your favorite feature? What do they do that you just love? Tell me in the comments. I'm gonna ask the same thing of you that are using SEMrush, um, or any other tool for that matter. Tell us what tool you're using, and tell us what you love about it. What are the features that you feel like are worthwhile? On SEMrush, there are a couple of really neat things that I like. I like the site audit. I set up one of our sites um, on here and you can put in multiple projects and it'll track that project. Um, it'll tell me what's wrong with my site. It'll find these errors. It goes above and beyond what Search Console is gonna give me, uh, which is pretty neat. When I click on the site audit, I can click into any of these and see what are all these errors that are going on, going on on my website. In this case, there are a lot of errors related to, and this is a site that we bought, but there are a lot of errors related to um, some of the content being presented as secure and some not secure. Usually it's an ad or an image that is not being served on an HTTPS, so under that SSL, um, and therefore it's getting that mixed content, which throws up a little flag for users on your site telling them that some of the content's not secure. Um, it's, it's really neat that they can show me that because now I can go in and just fix all those issues. They're also going to help me with my link tracking as well. Here I can look at my internal linking and find, do I have any broken internal links? Do I have any broken outgoing links? And then this tool will show me um, the backlink profile. Now, you'll notice if you were looking closely that the backlinks uh, listed here, there's more um, than what the Ahrefs tool said. So again, you're seeing that, and you know, monthly visits, referring domains, um, the, the numbers don't perfectly match up with my own analytics. And so again, the numbers are a little suspect, but I can click through here and again, see where my backlinks are coming from. Um, go check them, go make sure that they're, they're good, disavow any that I wanna disavow, um, and just keep track of my backlink profile. So pretty neat features available here in SEMrush. Another one that's kinda cool when there's an algorithm update, um, just to keep track of, is this. This is the SEMrush sensor. This is looking across different industries and seeing what is the volatility. Now, you can see here, this was Friday, December 4th, right after a big algorithm update. And you see the volatility was very high. It's out of 10. Um, and we can see that it was across the board. So it wasn't that one industry was particularly hit um, with wild swings between sites, which sites are um, being hurt and which are, are being benefited. It was really totally across the board. That's not always the case. So it's just kind of a neat place to look when there is an algorithm update and you are starting to see swings. A lot of cool features here inside of these tools. One time in particular when we really like to use this tool is if we're vetting a site that we're considering buying. I like to go look at the backlink profile of a site. I don't like to see a site that went from zero to a ton of backlinks all at once that doesn't have very much age behind it tells me somebody probably did something a little bit shady that could potentially harm my site in the future. But when it comes to actually building up a site, um, don't get hung up on these numbers. You can spend a lot of time trying to analyze, trying to optimize, and think that this is going to help you. And it would if they had complete access to all of the data. Um, but the reality is that they don't. And so while the tools have some really, really good features that I do think are worthwhile, don't let yourself spend a lot of time analyzing and assessing and getting hung up on the numbers. Your time will be much better spent doing search analysis, um, creating awesome content, writing good answer targets, and just being involved in your industry. If there's one piece of advice that I could give you that I feel like is missing from a lot of bloggers, that is just, immersing yourself the best you can in the field that you're blogging in. That means listening to audiobooks and podcasts. It means watching YouTube videos and reading everything that's going on in the industry. If you're involved to that degree, it's not gonna be hard to come up with topics to write about, and you're not gonna have to rely on a tool with incomplete data to help you figure out which articles are worth writing and which are not.